All right, y'all, wrapping up this crossover Thursday edition of Locked on Panthers and Locked on Saints, breaking down everything you need to know ahead of the Carolina Panthers at New Orleans Saints in that humid dome, uh, as Julian mentioned. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be diving in throughout all that. Make sure you come back on our Friday episodes as well as we take a deep dive, uh, one more deep dive ahead of the game uh, over on Locked on Panthers as well as Locked on Saints so you can continue to keep up with everything going on with your teams before they kick off their 2024 season. I love the way that you said it the other day, Julian, on your show. You said when toe meets leather. I think I've said that probably six or seven times after you said that. Uh, probably one of my favorite football phrases I think that I've ever heard. So thank you for that. Um, and I think you've got more really good football phrases for us when it comes to the, the things that need to happen for the Carolina Panthers uh, to get a win because it feels like it's kind of the fundamental stuff. Yeah, and that's what Dave Canales has said from day one. Get the football right. Don't have eight false starts in a game like they did last year <laughs> yes. at Seattle. Don't turn the football over. Be able to actually complete a forward pass. But first, what you got to do is you got to protect the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And then the receiver has to be able to get open. Then he's got to catch the ball. <laughs> then he's got to run. So many good forward football phrases. <laughs> and be able to get yardage. Like those are the simple <laughs> fundamental things. And I asked my listeners this on Twitter at Julian Council. There's your shameless plug. If you call there it is. X, I guess you can follow me there too. But it's the same yeah, yeah, thing. Put in twitter.com what pops up, Twitter. Um, <laughs> but I asked people, like, what are your realistic expectations for the Panthers this year? Most people were saying mm -hmm. about like six, seven wins. And then the common theme I heard was competence be mm. competent that's their expectation so what i need to see from the panthers for them to win on sunday is be competent what does that look like mm. being able to stay on schedule on offense i don't like the idea of this passing offense being in third and long i still yeah, yeah. need to see a lot out of bryce young out of the offensive line's ability to protect as again we have not seen them together in this kind of setting yet and I still got to see the receivers. I think mm -hmm. Deontay Johnson can be good for them this season, but it's been a couple years. I think because of Kenny Pickett not being good, Mitch Trubisky not being good, Mason Rudolph being a little bit better last year, but still not being good. That's mm -hmm. probably been a big reason why Deontay Johnson was upset in Pittsburgh and is now here in Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I think he's yeah. a better player when he's shown the last couple of years. So I still have a lot of questions about the pass game overall. So stay on schedule by being able to run the football, which is what Canales wants to do. He says they want to be stubborn about running the ball. Yeah. That's what they have to do. And like defensively, they got to stop the run. Last mm -hmm. year, first six games gave up 130 yards plus each time. And Camaro's iconic back, who can burn them by yeah. in that in that run game? They were 31st against the run according to EPA last year, and that has to improve. I think with Clowney coming in, replacing Burns, who was low key bad at setting the edge, that helps him. Having Shaq Thompson back, who broke his leg in this game on Monday night last year, that right. helps Josie Jewell as well, who already understands the scheme from his one season spent with the Panthers mm -hmm. coordinator Rogero Averro out in Denver a couple of years ago. Ashawn Robinson better than Deshaun Williams. They should be able to. That's what they got to do: stop the run. And then find a way to get off the field, man, on third down. I have concerns about the pass rush. I don't have a concern about J.C. Horn when he plays. He's got to play. But there are yeah. still questions at the other corner spot. As Dane Jackson, there was going to be questions about him anyways, but he's on uh, injury reserve for the first four weeks with a hamstring. So they traded for Mike Jackson from Seattle right before cut down day. He's been more of a rotational player. He's been better in that spot than as a starter. They brought in a bunch of dudes off the waiver wire who – I have personally never heard of who are maybe have to play on Sunday. So what's let's see what's opposite of JC and then get off the field. Cause that was a big problem they've had in years past with him not being healthy and just the overall talent level at that corner spot. Yeah, that's big, especially with the, the matchup here. Let, let me ask, let me ask one thing you talked about, like competence, you talked about the run game. In my opinion, you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but in my opinion, one of the competent things that Carolina can do is turn their run game over to Chuba Hubbard. Is that the plan? Uh, yeah, the plan is to uh, – this is what I always tell people uh, when it comes to running backs. You pay them federal minimum wage, no overtime, <laughs> no holiday pay, none of that. You uh -huh. use them, abuse them, then lose them. Chuba uh -huh. Hubbard's in his last year of his rookie deal. The plan is to run him into the ground. Miles yeah. Sanders, he has an out in his contract after this season. The plan is to run him into the ground. Mm -hmm. Like Jonathan Brooks. I don't know when we're going to see him. The, the rookie running back out of yep. Texas, who's currently on the non-football injury list after taking his ACL last November at UT. I don't know if we're going to see him. I don't even know if we need to see him. 
because the Panthers yeah. have a capable back in Chuba Hubbard who had 900 r- rushing yards last year and took the number one job after Miles Sanders struggled to get out the gates, just like the mm-hmm. entire team. Uh, but I think Ch- Chuba can be really good for them this year. So yeah, they can, they're going to lean on that run game, want to run some play action and really take some pressure off of Bryce. And Canales talked about yeah. all we need Bryce to do is play his 111. Now, you're going to need to do a little mm-hmm. bit more than that to justify sure. uh, giving all that up, including DJ Moore <laughs> last year. Right, right. But I, I understand what Dave is trying to say. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, good. I, I think that I think that run game leaning a little bit more on Chuba Hubbard, I think, is a is a smart idea. Certainly, it looked like that towards the end of the season last year. And the the last time that these two teams met back in December, I think December 10th, um, Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders combined for 161 rushing yards. Now, that didn't lead to points on the board. For Carolina, but it was huge uh, in terms of keeping the you know keeping things going, and maybe that's the difference uh, this year because the Saints, I think, it just it helps me transition a little bit to, to the things I think need to go right. One of the big things they got to get right is defending the run. Uh, number twenty-two in the NFL last year, they did not take the steps forward that they wanted to last year. They have to be able to get back there and stop the run. That's got to be number one. The other thing for me is uh, actually using Taysom Hill. I mean, the dude has been one of the best playmakers on the team and has barely seen the dang field uh, for them. There were games, Julian, where he would have like, you know, he would contribute like three touchdowns and everything three scores and then the next two games see the field for single digits in each game there's just no reason for that uh, and so best, i think that's a big one for me yeah the yeah. best tweet i saw on tuesday or maybe it was wednesday was Catherine terrell um of espn.com <laughs> the, the saints reporter cast. saying breaking Taysom hills back at tight end yeah, it's yep, like yep. this. Hey, they keep trying to make Taysom Hill happen. He's still in the league. He's gonna have like ten years. Like the guy's gonna get retirement from playing football. Like good for him. But oh I just, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I love it, so man. Funny. And and I'm so glad that they they changed his position designation for the fantasy aspect of it. But like the fact of the matter is that he's still gonna take snaps at quarterback. He's still gonna take snaps at tight end. He's still gonna be a returner. He's still gonna cover on special teams. And now he's taking snaps out of the backfield, Julian, as a fullback and as a tailback. So just. <gasps> Give him everything, but just keep him on the field. I mean, just give him the opportunity to go out there and make plays. I think that's one of the things that has stabbed them in the back over and over again is that they haven't made that commitment to one of their best playmakers. Um, and the final thing for me that goes that goes kind of both ways is uh, getting their passing game going. And as you alluded to, uh, not allowing Carolina's passing game to manufacture in front of them. I mean, they have one of the deepest cornerback rooms in the NFL, one of the best secondaries in the NFL. Uh, Jordan Howden, the young second year safety, is listed as the starter next to Tyron Matthew. I still have my suspicions that it will actually be veteran and former uh, Detroit Lion Will Harris lining up there. We'll see if I'm right or wrong on that. Uh, but I think that that secondary has a lot of talent and that Carolina receiving room at the very at the very least is trying to figure out like what talent it has. So the Saints can't let them figure that out in this game. Like let them figure that out week two. Don't let them figure it out week one. And then for uh, you know the other side of it is taking advantage of what is a, a, a still kind of shaky secondary for Carolina, I imagine, uh, with Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, getting Cedric Wilson involved, all that. And that's got to mean a good game from Derek Carr as well. So those are kind of the three big things for me. Passing yeah. game and limiting, all that kind of stuff. There is one more factor that we need to discuss. It's the factor of a revenge game. Lonnie yes. Johnson Jr. Lonnie is Johnson now a Carolina Jr. Panther. And, and he is not it, happy with the New no, Orleans Saints. <laughs> he is not. When reports came out last week from NFL Network's Tom Pelissero that the Panthers were planning on signing Lonnie Johnson Jr. to the practice squad and then elevating him for week one, he came out and said, New Orleans, I love you. The front office, we got beef. So yeah. let's, let's just see. And Lonnie Ooh. Johnson Jr. has the game of his life on Sunday, turns things around, and is able to help the Panthers win there in New Orleans. So I'm just going to throw that yeah, one out man. there. You heard He's... it here first. If it happens, if it doesn't happen, <laughs> I ain't You never heard all. it. He yeah. never said anything at all. Yeah. We're still trying to find the guy who said Lonnie Johnson Jr. was going to ball out. I would have been me. <laughs> Where'd he go? Where's that guy? Uh, oh, man. I love that. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, he's a talented dude. I mean, there's no doubt about it. He's a talented dude. He actually looked good here in New Orleans. There were belief, you know, there was belief in terms of like what he could be here and everything. And then, you know, dealt with the injury and all that. And then whatever happened, happened with those return negotiations. And, mm. you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see what happens revenge game wise. 